of the um, sanctuary. If you uh, like order Easter flowers, uh, please utilize that, uh, or you can call into the church office and, and do that as well. Uh, we just have one more for that. As we gather, uh, I'm just going to invite you into a spirit of prayer this morning. Prince of Peace, as your followers, we know that our call is not only to proclaim the gospel of peace, but to embody it in every interaction and word. You've given us all we need to be makers of peace and bearers of your land. So as we don the whole armor of God today, may others see us to be not only comforted, but also inspired to join your grace-filled revolution of reconciliation. I you stand and join me in love divine, all loves itself. We are opening hands.
demonstrates the, the, the depth of theology around the different ways that God's grace operates in our lives, uh, calling us to faith and, and saving us uh, through the cross and resurrection and sanctifying us, making us more holy through the Holy Spirit as we continue uh, to be finished as new creations until we take our place in heaven. So it's a wonderful hymn. Uh, if you are um, in need of just a little bit of, of, uh, of depth of understanding of grace, just focus on those words uh, in your free time. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures for you this morning, both of them talking, both of them stories about uh, shoes, in a sense. The first comes from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Moses was taking care of the flock for his father in law, Jethro, Gideon's priest. He led his flock out to the edge of the desert, and he came to God's mountain called Horeb. The Lord's messenger appeared to him in a flame of fire in the middle of a bush. Moses saw that the bush was in flames, but it didn't burn up. Then Moses said to himself, let me check out this amazing sight and find out why the bush isn't burning up. When the Lord saw that he was coming to look, God called to him out of the bush. Moses, Moses, Moses said, I'm here. And the Lord said, Don't come any closer. Take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. He continued, I am the God of your father, Abraham's God, Isaac's God, and Jacob's God. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The second scripture reading comes from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and his powerful strength. Put on God's armor so that you can make a stand against the tricks of the devil. We aren't fighting against human enemies, but against rulers, authorities, forces of cosmic darkness, and spiritual powers of evil in the heavens. Therefore, pick up the full armor of God so that you can stand your ground on the evil day, and after you've done everything possible, you still stand. So stand with the belt of truth around your waist, just as has your breastplate, and put shoes on your feet, so that you are ready to spread the good news of peace. Above all, carry the shield of faith so that you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. Lord, I have reading here. By the children, who do I meet for the short moments this morning? Burning up and, and getting all the black. 
So uh, why don't I why don't I take a look at this? And he starts walking over to the bush, and then this voice calls out from the bush. You ever heard bush talk? No. So this bush starts talking, and and the bush says, "Hey Moses, bro." <laughs> Maybe he says that. I don't know. Hey Moses, bro, it's God. All right. And he said, hey, you know, hey Moses, I want to try to get your attention. That's why I have this bush uh, burning up and not being consumed. And it, it worked, didn't it? I got your attention, Moses. And then he says, Moses, do not come any closer. You are standing on holy ground. So take off your shoes. Let's take off our shoes. Take off your shoes. <laughs> yeah. Take off your I know, take off your shoes in church. It's like a weird thing, right? But it's an amazing thing that reminds us that God called Moses to take off his shoes because he was standing on holy ground. What does that mean? What does that mean that, that Moses was standing on holy ground? What it means is that he was he was meeting God there. He got to meet God and talk to God. And it was this wonderful place, this holy place, this 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 holy place where um, where he met God and got to know God well, and then God had, you know, the rest of the story is that God had some really important things that God wanted Moses to do. And by taking off his sandals, it reminded him that this was a place to meet God. So, you know, it's totally up to you if you want to put your shoes back on or not the rest of this service. You can keep them off or you can put it back on if you want. But what's really neat about this sanctuary is that this is always a place where if you want, you can take your shoes off because it's holy ground. And if you take your shoes off coming into the sanctuary, then it will remind you that it's a place where you can meet God. Do you know this is a place where you can meet God? It is, yeah. Well, your sister knows. Yeah. <laughs> and now you know. And now Rocky knows. So let's pray. Let's pray together. God, this place is holy ground. We've come to meet you here. Help us to look for you. Amen. All right. Good week. Keep the shoes on. Take them off. You going to put that on? Feel some help? No, you're good? Does your sister need help? And then, you know, I'm kind of thinking, well, but Moses is supposed to take his shoes off, and then 
Yeah. So it's just, what do we do? Keep our shoes, this is why I wore these shoes today. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Uh, what do we do? We put, like, are we supposed to put shoes on? Or are we supposed to take them off? Um, there's all kinds of mixed messages here in these two stories when you put them together, uh, which we don't often put them together, right? This story from Exodus, this story from Ephesians. Who knew that shoes were so important to God? You know, there's lots of other places to talk about shoes. I just was only able to pick a couple of stories because I didn't have time to read all of the stories about shoes and sandals and taking them off and putting them on and all that stuff. But what we learn in these two stories are a few things. One, that shoes apparently have to have a lot to do with holiness, and shoes apparently have a lot to do with, with peace. Second, of course, we learned that, you know, sometimes scripture will tell you two opposite things, and then you've got to figure out what to do, right? So, scripture tells you to take off your shoes, or put them on, which is it, God? You want us to take off our shoes or leave them on, which, just as a side note, is a reminder to always be reading scripture in context, because there will be times when God wants us to take off our our shoes, because we're standing on holy ground, and other times that God wants to, us to put on shoes to spread the gospel of peace. But that question, when to take shoes off, when to, to leave them on, or put them on, it's a question that I typically ask whenever I visit someone's home. A, a lot of times I'll say, do you want me to take my shoes off or leave them on? Now, most people prefer for me to take off my shoes, though some people tell me to leave them on. The ones who tell me to leave them on, I think, they're trying, I, I at least imagine that they're trying to be welcoming and showing off how easygoing they are. Uh, and I want to believe that and that they don't uh, tell me that because they think my feet are in sync if I take my shoes off. But most of the time, when I'm visiting friends, let's say, I sometimes just, a lot of times, I just slip off, slip off my shoes before I even ask them. And I've actually noticed that a lot of people do the same when they come to my home. They're going to hang out for a while. They just slip off their shoes at the door and, and come in and stay a while. And uh, I notice this is a pretty, pretty common custom in a lot of people's homes. It's a symbol, I think, of respect and of our relationship with one another. It's saying, you know, I care about you. It's a simple thing, right? I care about you enough that I don't want to track dirt over your floors and bring all of those unclean things from the outside into the holy ground of your living room. It's a recognition, I think, that how and where we walk affects not only us, but others as well. Taking off your shoes is a way of showing concern for a neighbor. Thinking about their wishes and the cleanliness of their home more than your own comfort. When you enter someone else's home, you can either be respectful of their home, and at least ask the question, do you want me to take off my shoes? Or you can say, you know, I don't care if the carpet gets messed up. I'm not the one that's going to clean it later, so no big deal. I'm not going to do that. I was thinking about this everyday ritual as I was reading these stories, and then also trying to think of it in light of the war in Ukraine, where, where boots of uninvited Russian soldiers are marching brazenly across beautiful floors of Ukrainian cities and fields. And my guess is that those boots are tracking in dirt. Caring not for all that dirt that's tracked in, nor for the wishes of those who are living there. I think about when my parents first taught me about that ritual of, of you know, making sure to take off your shoes when you came into the house at home, and then, you know, at least being kind enough to ask if other people wanted you to do the same at their home, especially in this part of of the country where we have slushy and snowy winters and apparently springs, <laughs> um, and then a muddy later spring, right? Uh, it was a sign of respect for our neighbors and our friends. In a small way, by taking off my shoes, going into someone's home, they acknowledged that the whole world doesn't belong to me. I think most of the time in life, we find ourselves standing on somebody else's carpet. Except for those of us who are indigenous, indigenous to North America, and that's very few of us, we are all living and walking on someone else's land right now, even. And maybe that's what putting the shoes of peace on means. You know, a lot of times we think of the Ephesians 6 imagery, this, this armor of God in it, like 
kind of onward Christian soldier's way, marching as to war, right? That we're just going to go out and and, um, and and march out, and uh, you know, in God's name, and, and conquer the world for, for Jesus. And when you look at this passage more closely, it is not really a, a, an offensive kind of a, an armor, right? It is more about uh, protecting ourselves and giving ourselves the tools to stand our ground when evil comes toward us, not that we go out seeking evil to destroy. Now, when when war, that most natural of our human inclinations, and that outsized portion of our national budget, threatens to undo us at our very core, when we view everyone and everything just as something to acquire control or someone to tr- something to trample on, or when we're in a situation where we just jump at the chance to argue with someone because we just have to tell them how wrong they are and how right we are, and we seem much slower to open our ears and our hearts in a posture of listening, we discover that we are often tempted to make war rather than peace, even in everyday life. Peace is hard to make. Spreading the gospel of peace with these shoes of the armor of God is hard to make and even harder to keep. Whether it's from faraway lands in Eastern Europe to contentious meetings of local school boards, putting on the armor of God, including those shoes that spread peace, are about protecting us from our temptation as humans to make war. You know, despite many wars of supposed righteousness throughout the Old Testament of Scripture, which, by the way, were stories largely written by people who, like us, wanted to make sure that everyone knew that God was on their side in every war that they waged, despite all of those stories, the Bible, in a lot of ways, is a book of peace. Peace is a prevailing theme in much of Scripture, particularly of the prophets and Jesus and of the early church. We constantly hear prophets talking about beating swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. That, that, that um, well-known language about making farming implements out of weapons. Jesus tells us to turn the other cheek, encourages us, in fact, commands us to forgive instead of uh, take revenge on people. He, as well as the early church, promotes restorative justice instead of retributive justice, meaning the kind of justice that seeks to restore the relationship with with people who are in conflict or who have harmed one another or groups that have harmed one another, rather than just the kind of retributive justice, which would be the eye for an eye justice that leaves the whole world blind. And even in Revelation, we have a vision of an eternal kingdom where it's the peace of Christ that ultimately reigns. And of course, in our in our world, there is a shortage throughout human history of, of inspirational sayings about peace. Uh, you can you can just Google it for yourself, and you will find an abundance of quotes about peace. And I'll share just a few of them with you today. There's these wonderful ones. Some of them you may even know. Uh, Indira Gandhi uh, once said, you cannot shake hands with a clenched fist. Oh, she was so right about that. And Albert Einstein said that peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. Martin Luther King Jr. said that peace is not the absence of tension, but the presence of justice. I would say for this focus today, as we're talking about the shoes of peace, putting them on, putting on shoes that will enable us to spread peace, maybe the most appropriate remark about peace was made by Eleanor Roosevelt, who said, it isn't enough to talk about peace, one must believe in it. And it isn't enough to believe in it, one must work at it. I think 
that might be what it means to wear shoes and spread the gospel. It means being someone who not only talks about peace and believes in peace, but is willing to work at it on all levels. It honestly might be as simple and yet as challenging as being the kind of person who works for peace by taking off one's shoes when you're standing on holy ground, respecting your neighbor's carpet, let's say. Well, if you just have that image in your head throughout the day, if you committed to spending more time being aware, uh, and all of us committed to spending our own time, all of our time being more aware of, of our own dirt and grime that is on the soles of our feet and our souls, and trying our best not to let it spread to the sacred spaces that belong to others. If every time we enter a home, time we entered a relationship or an interaction, the first thing we did was, figuratively speaking, took off our hard, grimy boots of conflict and replaced them with the soft slippers of peace, let's say. What if we treated all ground as holy ground? What if we treated all places as places where God was present? to meet us there. It would make it much harder for us to, to uh, wage war when we realize that God is in that place. What, what, what kind of a world would that be if we traded in our hard-earned shoes of conflict for shoes of peace? What kind of world would that be? I think it might be a world in which Everywhere we stood was holy ground because God would be with us. God would meet us there. And God would help us to spread peace in whatever way that we need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing in the garden, and we'll remain seated as we sing.
of silent prayer where you may lift up your, your joys and concerns in silent, silent prayer uh, individually, and then we will continue in spirit of prayer together. Let us turn our hearts for you. so thankful that you have met us here in this holy ground. We are so glad that you have invited us to consider more deeply these everyday objects that have a lot to teach us about your way of living in the world. Lord, we spend our days taking, taking off shoes and putting them on Lord, that as we do, you would help us to be mindful of the ways that either taking off shoes or putting shoes on can be a way to spread your peace in our lives. Lord, make us instruments of your peace, as St. Francis once prayed. Help us be those who seek to talk less and
holy space with sorrow, with stress, frustration, and anger, perhaps, confusion. And all of this mixture of emotions, Lord, we come to kick off our shoes. you to meet us in this space. Give us strength, give us courage, give us comfort in all the places we meet. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We taught us to pray and so we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. To our time of offering. If you wish to give uh, to the ministry of Avery United Methodist Church, you may do so at any time using the, the offering plate on the back of, in the back of the sanctuary. You can also give safely and securely online. Uh, you also may use both of those means to give to, uh, to support uh, relief efforts in Ukraine. Uh, we are this week uh, making our last Avery in Action um, collection for the first quarter of the year, and everything we have collected thus far and will collect today for Avery in Action will go to relief efforts in Ukraine and to uh, those who have uh, fled to neighboring countries. Uh, we do this through the United Methodist Committee on Relief, which is a safe way, a safe way to make sure that it gets to those who are in need. One of the great things about a global church and a global denomination is that we are able to do those kinds of things in um, powerful ways that we could not do if we were just our own church uh, by ourselves. And so we're thankful for that opportunity. I am also thankful for all of these shoes and socks that have been donated. And if you have more that you haven't made, uh, haven't had a chance to, to bring them to the church yet, uh, just please bring them in, in the next day or two uh, into the office, and uh, we'll make sure they get to where they need to go. But uh, these, are, these are just wonderful uh, blessings that you all have provided. So if you don't know, uh, if you haven't been following along over the last few weeks, we decided that because today's focus is shoes, today would be a great time to do a shoe and sock drive, which we have not done in, in a few years. Uh, we do this every once in a while for Trinity West across the street, as well as uh, other elementary schools that may benefit if, um, if we collect more than what Trinity West needs. And so what these shoes and socks enable the school nurse to do is, is uh, keep the kids in the classroom learning. And I, I've said this the last few weeks and it just bears repeating. That, you know, unfortunately, it's a reality that many kids come to school with holes in their socks and holes in their shoes and their shoes are falling apart. And perhaps they are unable to, their families are unable to afford new shoes and socks as often as they need them. If you have kids or are around kids, and you know how quickly they grow out of different sizes of shoes sometimes. So this enables the school nurse to, instead of having to duct tape kids' shoes, which is what they do when they don't have uh, new shoes lying around in the nurse's office, uh, it allows them to be able to just give them a new pair of shoes and allows the kids to go back into the classroom and do what they're supposed to be doing at school, which is learning. And so in, in a very small but significant way, it's a, it's a justice issue of making sure that everybody has the same ability to focus on learning and not have to focus on other things that should just be, uh, uh, should, should be able to be provided in any way. And so we're just able to, to do that as a church, and I'm just so thankful for all the, the many ways that you have been generous throughout the years to the school, including this. And if you, uh, if you want to join me, I'll invite you to extend a hand towards these shoes and socks that we, uh, that we have up here as we, um, as we pray for uh, these shoes and socks that they may get to uh, 
those who need them most, and we will pray for the children that you have aware of. Let's pray together. God, you have blessed us so greatly, and in one of those ways you have that you have blessed us, you have blessed us with a spirit of generosity in this church. And so we pray, Lord, that in this act of giving of these shoes and socks, in some small way, your gospel of peace may be shared. We pray, Lord, for that you would bless these, these socks and shoes more importantly, you would bless those children who wear them. Make these shoes and socks, shoes and socks of peace themselves. May they bring peace and joy to those children so they can focus on being the best students they can be. As they wear them, may you go with them and make everywhere they walk holy ground. Or whether they realize it or not, you are with them. And whether they realize it or not, you are helping them and, and supporting them and encouraging them to be children of peace. Lord, we pray that they will be used by the, the nurse and by the school in general in the way that uh, is most needed. We thank you for all that you have done to enable us to give in this way. All this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the power of your Holy Spirit. So, next week is oil. That is our fifth uh, Sunday in Lent, and that will be uh, April, Sunday, April 3rd. I invite you to join us for worship next week for a lot of reasons, and one of those is because we're focusing on oil talking about the importance of oil in scripture and the importance of oil in this ritual of anointing that is common at times in, um, in Christian practice. And so I invite you to, to look ahead towards next week and join us either in, uh, in the sanctuary or online. And uh, as we close today, we're going to stand and sing hymn number 430, O Master, Let Me Walk With You. <coughs>
to go forth from this place, remember to always wear those shoes that spread the gospel of peace. And remember that as you do, the God of all grace who calls us to his eternal glory will go with you, will meet you in all those places where the ground is holy, and will restore, support, strengthen, and establish each and every one of you. God be all honor, glory, and power forever and ever. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.